You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Here's to Michael Franklin, in honor of the most stunning, ruthless stewardship of a corporate takeover I've ever seen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh, thank you, everyone. And may I just say, I absolutely deserve it. <laughs> I know you've had your eye on that corner office for some time. Well, it's yours. Mm, actually, Alan, uh, I have my eye on the corporate suite. <laughs> That's my office. Exactly. Careful, Michael. Your ambition is showing. <laughs> well, my ambition is what made this deal happen. My ambition is what allows our billable hours to skyrocket every quarter. And my ambition is what will eventually lead me to not only your office, Alan, but to your company paid condo, your company paid Mercedes, and your company paid weekly $200 haircuts and manicures. Just kidding. <laughs> I have to admit you had me going there, Michael. I have no doubt that someday you will occupy my seat in the company. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what the future holds. Tut, tut, no harm in celebrating. Uh, speaking of the future, check out that wild-looking old woman sitting behind the table. Ah, wearing that colorful headscarf with all the jewelry? She looks like a contestant for best Halloween costume. No, I think she's telling fortunes. See how she's looking at that guy's hand? Let's go see what she has to say. Alan, <laughs> you don't believe in this stuff, do you? Of course not. It's just for fun. On the other hand, maybe she can give us a hot tip for our next takeover target. He leaves, for they are never wrong. Ah, I see there are two more supplicants who wish to learn about their futures. Make that one supplicant? <laughs> I'm not playing. Oh, go ahead, Michael. What can it hurt? I put my faith in real things, Alan, <laughs> like profits and a well-written prospectus and a robust return on an investment dollar. And people? <laughs> people are the least reliable things on the planet. Well, anyway, I'll spring for your reading. How much is it, please? For this most rare and deep connection to the mystic masters of the cosmos, the charge is five dollars. Five dollars? It's highway robbery. <laughs> All in good fun and worth five bucks to find out what's next for the amazing Michael Franklin. There you are, my good woman. The mystic masters thank you. Yeah, I bet they do. Please be seated and give me your right hand. What's wrong with my left hand? The right hand crosses the body's meridian, connecting directly to the humors of the heart through the intercession of the soul. Oh, I'll say this for you. <laughs> You've got the sales pitch down pat. Please close your eyes and focus your thoughts on your inner golden light. I would have guessed that green is your color. Michael, quiet. All right, I'm quiet, I'm focused. Watch as the golden light moves toward you. Slowly, it surrounds your consciousness. Surrender to its mystery. I never surrender. The mystic masters perceive you as a man who values work above all else. <laughs> She's got that right. She could have said the same thing about anybody in this bar. There are people in your past who have suffered a disconnection with you. Speak. 
spirits are left unsatisfied. Well, it can't be old girlfriends. He doesn't take time to go on dates. Mm. Your soul is troubled. Uh, my soul is just fine. Thank you very much. There's something strange. I am attempting to discern your future. But I cannot. I could have told you that. No offense. <gasps> oh. What's the matter? The reading is over. What? Hey, we paid you to tell us fortune. Here is your money back. I cannot complete the reading. Now look, lady. <laughs> I don't believe in all this hocus pocus, but a deal's a deal. Just tell me I'm going to be the richest man in the world and you can keep the five bucks. I do not take lightly the readings of the soul. I'm going to go complain to the manager. Alan, hold on, Alan. Look, we don't want to cause you any trouble, lady, all right? Just say what's on your mind and we'll leave. Very well. I will tell you what the mystic masters have divined. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. What is it? Alan's gonna fire me? <laughs> I'm gonna lose my hair? Your future is very clear, and it is this. In ten days, you will be dead. What? I don't think that's very funny. <laughs> the signs are serious, and the reading is true. What kind of scam is this? Come on, Michael. Don't let her ruin your night. You know, lady, we were humoring you by coming over here. The least you could do is play along and not be such a downer. I did not wish to reveal your fate. You insisted that I do. When the clock strikes midnight on the tenth day to come, you will be dead. Uh, and now what? Wait, wait, wait. And no. <laughs> Don't tell me. Uh, let me guess. Uh, oh, yeah. I pay you another five bucks, and you tell me how I can avoid this terrible fate. That is impossible. Your fate is sealed. Let's go get a beer. Come on, Michael. Fine. It's been a real pleasure spending time with you, ma'am. Alan, I'm heading home. I got some the paperwork to finish anyway. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Suddenly, I don't know, I've ah, lost my desire for celebration. <laughs> okay, buddy. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. I'll be dead in ten days. Ha! Ah, jeez. Yeah. Con artist. Come on. Oh, where's a taxi when you need one? Oh. Hey, taxi! Taxi over here! Hey, where to, buddy? Take me to... Take... Hey, pal, you okay? I feel... Dizzy. Uh, dizzy? You don't look so good. I... I need... Hey. <sighs> hey, buddy! Oh my gosh, he passed out. Gotta get him to the hospital. Mr. Franklin, can you hear me? Where am, where, where am I? Ah, you. Uh, you're in the emergency room at Samaritan Hospital. What? What, what happened? What's, what's going on? Easy, easy, please. Don't try to sit up right away. You're still recovering from the anesthesia. Anesthesia? Yes. For, for what? You were brought here because you passed out in a taxi cab. 
Do you remember that? Um, vaguely. We performed some tests on you. Blood pressure, heart, everything was normal. Hmm. Well, then, I don't get it. Then why am I... I... In, an, in an abundance of caution, we gave you an MRI. I'm, uh, I'm afraid we found something unusual. Oh. Huh. Well, what does that mean? There's a dark spot on the X-ray of your brain. We, we don't know what it is until we perform more tests, of course, but I must impress on you. This is a very serious situation. Well, what happens next? Well, I'd like to check you into the hospital for further procedures. We can consider options for chemotherapy and radiation right away. But, but I feel fine. I, I'm in great shape. Cancer has no respect for those issues, I'm afraid. How long do I have? A, a few years? Uh, given the size of your anomaly, I suspect that your prognosis is dire. And how long? Is that six months? It could be a matter of days. I'm very sorry, Mr. Franklin. <clears throat> I will send the nurse in to take your information, all right? Days, wait. The old woman in the park, she was right. I'll be dead in ten days. Portrait of a man frozen in the amber of fear. Michael Franklin, workaholic captain of industry, ruthless to his enemies and dismissive of routine human interaction. Given a prognosis that would send a chill of terror down the spine of the most stalwart of men, he is faced with the rising specter of his own mortality. But even worse, he stares into the rear view mirror of a life only half lived. Devoid of true friendship, with only a string of consummated business deals to mark his measure, Michael Franklin is about to embark on a frightful journey of self-examination that can only be experienced in the land between regret and insistent memory, a land we like to call the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Ten Days, starring Ned Bellamy with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Uh, nurse, what happened to the patient who was in this bed, Mr. Franklin? I just saw him a moment ago, doctor. I have no information about his condition. Oh, I certainly hope he isn't about to do something foolish. Is Alan in yet? Oh, yes, Mr. Franklin. He's... Are you all right, Mr. Franklin? I'm fine. I don't believe I've ever seen you in the office without shaving or changing your clothes from yesterday. I was in a hurry this morning. Is he in a meeting? He just finished a call. Uh, fine. I'll only need a minute. Oh, but he's got another appointment at... I'll only be a minute. Michael, you look like you haven't been to sleep all night. Isn't that the suit you wore yesterday? Don't tell me you went out to celebrate without me. Alan, I quit. <laughs> yeah, me too. Alan, listen to me. I'm quitting. This is some kind of joke, right? I would appreciate it if you would expedite the disposition of my account. I want to close out my portfolio. I'm cashing in my stocks. I need my retirement funds and my annual bonus. Every bit of it. Michael, you're talking crazy. What are you doing? What's this all about? What part didn't you understand? I mean, you can't just quit. But <laughs> I just did. What on earth for? Personal reasons. Personal reasons? After all these years of working together, you offer me that? Correct. Michael, 
If this has something to do with that crazy old woman who told your fortune last night... It's not that. I just... I just decided to take my career in a different direction. I've... I've just been thinking about making this move for a long time. I don't believe you. Alan, no offense. But I don't care if you believe me or not. I've made my decision, and I'd like you to honor it. You realize that if you disassemble your corporate portfolio early, there will be substantial penalties. Not to mention the perks you'll be losing. The company car, the country club membership, the center court basketball tickets. Can you have the accounting department wrap everything up right away? Oh, and I'd appreciate all of the various income streams to be folded into one check. <laughs> that check will be worth several million dollars. Yes. Well, I can't say I approve of what you're doing, and I can only hope you have a good reason, even if you won't tell me. Could you make the call, please? I'm in a bit of a hurry. After 12 years, I don't see why there's such a... Uh, y yes, this is uh, Alan Fisher in corporate. I have a, well, it's an unusual request. Michael Franklin has decided to leave the firm, and he wants all of his outstanding monies gathered into one check for immediate pickup. Yes, I understand the amount is substantial. Very good. He'll be right there. All right, Michael. The check is being... Michael? Michael, where did he go? You, sir? I'd like to buy a ticket to Rome, please. Leaving today. Very good, sir. And on what date would you like to return? Uh, just a one-way ticket, please. I just love Rome. The sights, the food, the museums. It's a banquet of... Uh, yeah, I'm in a hurry. Please. If you'll just sign here. Will you prefer a window or an aisle seat? Surprise me. Mr. Franklin, welcome to the Grand Hotel Rome's premier destination. Our presidential suite has been prepared, all three fireplaces are ablaze, the champagne is on ice, and your veranda opens onto the courtyard where Rome's finest string quartet is waiting to play for you. And of course, an entire staff of valets are at your disposal. And the concert tickets for this evening? The limousine will gather you at 6 o'clock. You will be driven directly to the private entrance where a personal elevator will whisk you to the ambassador's box. Only the finest for you, Mr. Franklin. <laughs> Bravo! Wonderful! Excuse me, Mr. Franklin. The young lady in the next box I sent this fine wine to you. Uh, well, well, please ask the lady if she would care to join me. Right away, Mr. Franklin. I haven't seen you at the theater before. Do you come to Roma very often? <laughs> You might say this is a once-in-a-lifetime vacation. <laughs> I want to see him do everything. All the finest foods, all the finest wines. I want to hear the best music and experience all the riches the world has to offer. <laughs> all at once. <laughs> Why settle for the ordinary when we can fill our lives with the amazing? Oh, you are a man of action. Speaking of action, would you care to dance? <laughs> I would love to dance, but not here. There's a fabulous nightclub in the center of the city, very exclusive. The limousine awaits. <laughs> what 
a wild dancer. <laughs> it's not me. It's a, it's a champagne. You're so funny. <laughs> I believe I'm slightly tipsy, too. Oh, uh, tipsy. What does it mean? It means I've had too much to drink, which means I'll probably have a ferocious hangover tomorrow. Oh, that is too bad. Oh, but no worries. The, the way to prevent a hangover is to keep drinking. More champagne! More champagne! <laughs> more champagne! And more dancing! And more dancing! <laughs> Michael, are you sure you can afford to buy drinks for the whole restaurant? That's only money. And, and look how much fun they're having. Look how much fun I'm having. <laughs> waiter, waiter, another round for my friends. A three cheers for a friend Matthew. Uh, it's Michael. Okay, cheers, cheers for, for Michael. 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 Michael, are you able to walk? It's not me. It's the streets that keep moving. You dance the night away. And we'll do it again tonight. The sun rises over the ocean. If I see a million mornings, I never grow tired to seeing that sight. Imagine if you only had a few more to see. I'm sorry, what did you say? I, I said, would you care for some breakfast? I'm starving. Then let's go to the best restaurant in the city and order everything on the menu. I've never met a man like you, Michael. If you want something, you just take it. <laughs> of course. What's that old saying? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Michael, what's wrong? You look sad. Did I say something wrong? Maria, I wanted to ask you something. What is it, Michael? Would you care to join me on a small trip? Where to? Oh, I know a charming village near here. We could have a picnic. Actually, what I had in mind was, was Paris. Paris, France. And, and then London. And then Monte Carlo, or, or, or Moscow, or, or Hong Kong. I mean, we could go anywhere in the world. But what will we do when we get there? Whatever we want. I'll, I'll buy you diamonds or a new car. Would you like a new car? Michael, you're making my head swim. I don't need a new car or diamonds. What then? A, a yacht? My life is here in Roma. I can't just pick up and leave to go hopping from one country to the next. Why not? You just said you admired me for that very thing. I admire your freedom, but... I have responsibilities. My parents are here, my friends. Well, that'll be one phone call away. I can't just leave. You can do anything you want to, just like me. Don't you have anyone you feel responsible to? We were discussing breakfast. Breakfast, that's what we need. Michael, I asked you a question. Come. We'll order the most expensive breakfast in town and in the most expensive restaurant. We'll have them serve us eggs on, on plates made of gold. I'm not really hungry. Where are you going? Where are you going? I have things to do. But, but what about Paris, London? You're willing to give all that up? If I left with you, then I would be giving up something. Like what? My life here. It's who I am, the people I love, the friends I have. So, window dressing, none of that is important. And what do you think is important? I am, and what I want. I see. Goodbye, Michael. Fine! I've got to pass by myself. <laughs> There's lots of beautiful women there, too!
Bonsoir, Monsieur Franklin. Welcome to Perry. Your suite is prepared for you with a view of the Seine and a bottle uh, of... A bottle of champagne on ice, right? May we? <laughs> What'd you say your name was? My name is Angelique. Uh, uh, I'll call you Angel. My uh, beautiful French angel. What about you, my dear? I am called Giselle. Ah, Giselle. <laughs> Giselle, I knew her well. <laughs> oh, you are so silly. <laughs> I'm Michael. <laughs> But why don't you call me Mike? <laughs> Nobody ever calls me Mike anymore. Not since I was a little boy. Were you as naughty then as you are now? <laughs> I was a good boy. Very smart. In fact, I was smarter than everybody. Did you know that? That was better than all of them. <laughs> oh, you are a good person, Mike. Nobody ever bought me a pearl necklace on the same day I met them. Mm. I'll buy you another one tomorrow. <laughs> hey, we need more caviar here, garçon. More caviar, s'il vous plaît. But Mike, we have two bowls full on the table already. They're ten minutes old. We need fresh caviar. Freaking caviar. Ooh. Let's Whoa. dance. Oh, Mike. Welcome to London, Mr. Franklin. Your suite has been prepared for you. And bottle of champagne and ice. Got it. Got it. Got it. Let's say. Just, on, on second thought, cancel my room. Book me on a flight to Monaco. I got an itch to gamble. Uh, uh, right away, sir. And the number is 29. Red... Don't worry about it. It's only money, and there's plenty where that came from. Hey, another 10,000 in chips, please. Is the gentleman sure he has already lost several hundred thousand dollars? If the gentleman wanted to hire a babysitter, the gentleman would have done so. You understand? As the gentleman wishes. Mr. Franklin. Good morning, Mr. Franklin. Mr. Franklin? Hello? Uh, Mr. Franklin, hmm? your brunch is here, sir. Shall I place the champagne bottle next to the bed? Shall you... shall you... who are you? Yeah. Where am I? I am Captain Philippe Duchette. This is the Fandango Dancer. The luxury yacht you rented last evening. I, re I rented? Was I alone? The gentleman was escorted by several very attractive ladies, and uh, there was a request for the boat to take you to Australia. But, as you may know, that trip is beyond the range of this vessel. I wanted you to take me to Australia. <laughs> After we receive the Alaskan crab, Russian caviar, and of course, the champagne. Uh, I hope I never see another glass of champagne. What shall I do with the cases that are on the deck? <laughs> How many cases did I order? Ten. <laughs> They're yours. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Do you wish to proceed with the cruise? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Very good, sir. All right. For a week, I've eaten the finest foods, drunk the most expensive champagne. I've slept in the most exquisitely comfortable beds with the most luxurious silk sheets. I've, I've held beautiful women in my arms. I should be the happiest man on earth. 
I should have a permanent grin tattooed on my face. Why am I so miserable? I only have a few days left to live. A few days. I need to be... I need to be somewhere where someone knows me, where I... where I don't have to pay for the company of people. I need to go home. I need to go home. Taxi! Taxi, over here! Hey, where to, mister? 1020 Clark Street. Hop in. Looked like that wind was gonna take you away, mister. We flew in through the storm. It was quite a bumpy landing. Well, it'll probably blow over soon. Say, I don't think I've seen you around here before. Well, I haven't lived here for quite some time. That must be it then. Oak Grove being such a small town and all, I know just about everybody around. Yeah, yeah, well, as I, as I said, it's been a few years. Just visiting? Uh, that's right. Family? Mm, not, not really. What'd you say your name was? I, I did, but it's, it's Michael Franklin. Your dad was the high school teacher. That's right. Oh, I don't think I remember seeing you at the funeral. What was it, uh, four years ago? Uh, I wasn't here for the funeral. You didn't come to your own father's funeral? <laughs> Not that it's any business of yours, but <laughs> I had meetings in Japan and I uh, couldn't fly all the way back here. Is that all right with you? Is it okay with you? Look, if you don't mind... You'd prefer if I stopped flapping my gums, right? Well, I wasn't going to put it like that. Not to worry. The wife says I'm 99% hot air. It's just that I've been flying for the better part of 24 hours. Jet lag and all that, you know. Well, say no more. My lips are sealed. Anyway, here we are. 1020 Clark. Let me help you with your bag. It's all right. I can manage. Here you go. Keep the chain. A uh, mister! Do you know you just paid me with a $50 bill? Huh? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Well, you have yourself a really fine day, because I sure will. And you be careful in that wind, you hear? Uh, well, something tells me it's not the wind I'll have to worry about. Uh, here it goes. Hi, Carrie. Surprise. Michael? What are you doing here? <laughs> it's, it's a long story. Um, may I come in? Well, I... It's pretty windy out here. I suppose so. Thank you. Michael, what's going on? You just show up on my doorstep after four years? Well, you know me. Spur of the moment. You are not a spur of the moment person. You plan everything in your life. I wouldn't be surprised to find that you plan how many times you blink every day. Well, the truth is, I, I don't have any place else to go. That sounds dramatic. It's true. What about the penthouse? It's gone. The beach house? Gone. They're all gone. I, I sold everything. I thought you went through your midlife crisis when you left me. Apparently, it's still going on. Please, Carrie. I don't want to fight. Then what do you want? I, I, shh, just, I just wanted to see you again. You just wanted to see me. Okay, you see me. Now what? Do, do you mind if we, if we sit down? 
Michael, I have to be at work in an hour, and I'm in the middle of a term paper. You went back to school. I'm getting my master's. That's wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, you planned it for years. It's, it's, it's great that, that you finally decided to do it. Yeah, well, if there's nothing else on your mind... So, uh, how have you been? Busy. I don't have a lot of downtime, but that's how I like it. You, 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 you redecorated things here. You redecorated the house. I needed a fresh start after you left. Oh, oh, Carrie, about that, I, I'm so... If you're about to apologize, please don't. I've already more than paid you back by thinking the most horrible thoughts any person could think about another person. I guess I deserve that. Oh, you have no idea. How could you just walk away from a marriage, Michael? What was so terrible that you couldn't stand up like a man and fight for me? For us? It wasn't about you, Carrie. Oh, that's good to know. Because when I was picking up the pieces, when you left, it sure felt like it was about me. What I mean is that uh, I wasn't a good husband. True. You were always working. And I knew that I wouldn't be a good father. True. You never even walked the dog. So, I didn't give up on you. Or us. I gave up on myself. Well, that makes everything all better. You can go now. Well, Carrie, please. Oh, I could just clobber you for coming back here. It isn't fair for me to have to dredge up these old feelings again. Well, maybe a civilized conversation without any bickering would do both of us some good. I don't think so. Please, Carrie, it's more important than you know. For what purpose, Michael? So you can go back to your high-powered, big-shot job in the city and feel good about yourself? I just don't want to leave loose ends, please. For, for better or for worse, can we, can we just talk? I'm not looking for forgiveness, just closure. Well... One cup of coffee? I'll, I'll even make it. All right. One cup, and I'll make the coffee. Yours always tasted like motor oil. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you quit your job, sold your homes, and now you're here. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, about that. I guess I just realized that being a workaholic isn't very much fun, after all. But that's all you know. When we were married, you barely slept at night. You were up early to track the Asian stock market. You stayed up late to finish paperwork. I can count on one hand the number of times we actually went out on anything resembling a date. And even when we did go out, you acted like it pained you to be away from your business calls. That is all over now, Carrie. Money doesn't mean a thing to me. I find that hard to believe. <laughs> believe it. It's true. So, what? You're gonna take up oil painting? Or become the stand-up comedian you always wanted to be? Nothing like that. Actually, actually, it's quite serious. Last week, I... What was that? It came from the living room. Oh, the tree! The wind knocked the tree into my house! Carrie, wait a sec, wait a sec, Carrie, don't go over there. That'd be dangerous. That's a tornado warning! Oh my god! The house across the street! The roof just caved in! Alright, look, let's get into the basement. The power just went out! I have flashlights downstairs! Wait, outside, look! What? Michael, come on, there's no time! Well, look in the street, there's a kid in a bike. <gasps> oh no! That's Jimmy from next door! He doesn't know which way to go. Oh, Michael, he's going to be hurt. Uh, I'll get him. Michael! What are you doing? Michael! Ah! Jimmy! Jimmy, keep your head down. That's Jimmy, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Help me! I'm right here, buddy. I'm right here. I'm going to carry you into the house, okay? What about my bike? I'll get you a new one. Let's get out of the storm, okay? Okay. Put your arms around my neck and hold on. I'm trying. Squeeze real tight, Jimmy. I'm scared. And I'll be brave for the both of us, Jimmy. Okay? <laughs> get to get this door open. Michael, I can't budget. Carrie, push. Put your 
push as hard as you can. I'm Harry, push. Pushing. Harder. As hard as you can. There, you got it. We made it. We made it. Into the basement. Come on. Come on, Jimmy. That's it. Let's go get safe. Okay. storm's cleared. It's over. Is the wind gonna get me? No, honey. You're safe. Look. <laughs> that car. It's been overturned. At least there's no more damage to the house. Mom! Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, Jimmy, we didn't know where you were. We had him in the basement, with us. I was so scared. And then the wind came, and then this man came and saved me. You saved my Jimmy? Well, not really. Yes, you did, Michael. You ran right into the path of the tornado and brought him inside. Oh, come here and let me give you a hug. You don't have to. <laughs> okay. Oh. How can I ever thank you? You don't have to. It was my pleasure. Is our house okay, Mom? Yes, sweetie. We were very lucky. Jimmy, you're a very lucky little boy. Yes, and thank you again for my son's life. Yeah, thanks. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Michael, you saved Jimmy's life. You're a hero. I, I didn't even have time to think. I, I just saw him and ran. It was still amazing. When the chips were down, you really came through. I'm proud of you. Oh, look. Look at the damage in your living room. No, it's okay. All of that can be fixed. The main thing is that we're all safe and healthy. Right. Listen, Carrie. Those repairs? They're gonna be expensive. I have insurance. Oh, yeah, but that will only cover the basics. Let me take care of the costs. Michael, you don't have to do that. No, but I want to. And I can afford it. But you can't just drop that kind of money on a problem that isn't yours. Listen, all I know is that when I helped Jimmy just now, it felt good. It, it felt better than anything I've done for a long time. And, and the idea of helping you out with bills feels good, too. So please, just let me do this. Well, I'm not in a position to turn down a gift like that. But what about you? Before the storm hit, you were about to tell me something. You said it was serious. It, it doesn't matter now. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Here, here, let me write you a check before I leave. Are you going so soon? You just got here. Yes, yes, I, I, <laughs> I think I got what I was looking for. Here, here you go. Now listen, don't you look at it until I leave, okay? I promise. Where are you going? I have some business to finish. Goodbye, Carrie. Goodbye, Michael. <gasps> A million dollars? Michael! Michael! Yes? What is it? Forget the late hour, Reverend. Uh, I, I realize it's nearly midnight, but I wanted to visit the chapel and the, and the door's locked. 
Unfortunately, in these times, we must protect ourselves against theft. The doors remain locked overnight. Is there a way I could just go inside for a few moments? No, I'm sorry. If you can come back in the morning, yeah. But you see, tomorrow morning will be too late. I, I only have tonight. Mm-hmm. It always seems that way, my son. But have a little faith. Please. Go home. Get some sleep. I don't have a home anymore. I, I've just come in from the airport. I, I, I came straight here. Please, it's, it's, it's more important than you know. All right. You seem to be in great need. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Yeah, it, it, it's one of these. Ah, here we go. I'll come back in ten minutes. I won't need more than five. And now that I'm here, I don't know what to say. It's been a long time since I've set foot in a place like this. In fact, I can't remember the last time. I, I suppose it's true, people come back when they're in trouble, but I'm not exactly in trouble. In fact, all well, my troubles will be over in just a few minutes. Then why am I here? Maybe I just wanted to see if I could find a moment of peace before everything ends. Just a single solitary moment when I don't have to feel so alone. The, the truth is, I'm alone because of my own actions by the selfishness of the man I've become. I was given love, but I turned away from it in favor of my career. I gave up friendship in favor of business colleagues who couldn't care less if I lived or died. So what did it all mean? What is the sum total of my life? I have no job, no home. I'm gonna die without a single friendly voice in my ears. I did have some good times with Carrie. Thank goodness for Carrie. I don't blame her for being angry. And despite her anger, she took me into her home. She forgave me. And Jimmy, I saved his life. He'll have a chance to grow up, to have a family and a little boy of his own. I gave that to him. I did make a difference after all. Maybe I had to go through it all so that I could be there to save his life, if that's true. And it's worth it. I'm glad things turned out the way they did. I did something worthwhile. My life mattered after all. Nearly midnight on the tenth day, just like the old lady said. When the clock strikes midnight on the tenth day to come, you will be dead. I'm not afraid. <laughs> I thought this moment would be terrifying, but I actually feel ready. No regrets. I'm prepared to say goodbye to everything. Excuse me, sir. I'll have to ask you to leave now. Yes, I'll, I'll go. And, and thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. No, may, may I ask one favor? What is it? If anyone asks, can you tell them I was ready and that I was grateful? Grateful? For what? Oh, for everything. It was all a gift. Okay, it's time. I don't know what to do. What I... I mean, if I should... How do I... How? Church bells. They stopped. midnight on the tenth day I'm still alive nothing happened okay nothing's happening the old woman said I had ten days to live that I would die at the stroke of midnight <laughs> she lied <laughs> she lied
Hey, excuse me. Hey, excuse me. The old lady, the, the one who reads fortunes, is she here? She just left a few minutes ago. She walks to the bus stop down in the corner. Oh, which corner? Which way? Up that way, go left. Where is she? I don't want to be. Don't let her be. Ah, there! There she's ever. Hey! Don't get on that bus! Wait! What is it? Who, who is calling? You... you lied to me! Who is it? Who, who are you? What do you want? Look, I'll stand in the light so you can see my face. Now, do you remember me? Ah, yes. The angry man. And I'm still angry. You you told me, in ten days, at the stroke of midnight, I'd be dead. Ten days are now over. I sold my home. I shut my life down because I, I believed in you. Yes. I told you that in ten days you would be dead. So? And I was correct. The man I spoke to ten days ago is dead. What? What? What, what? what do you mean? That man was selfish and cruel. That man was friendless and meaningless. Can you say the same things about yourself today? I guess not. He's gone. Bury him. Give yourself the rarest of all gifts in life. A second chance. A second chance? Huh. Sounds too good to be true. And yet, here it is, yours for the taking. You're right, things are different now. I don't know how to thank you. Live for someone other than yourself. That's the best thing any of us can do. Actually, there might be someone willing to let me try. And her name is Carrie. Thank you. Thanks for the second chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Michael Franklin, a man on a mission to burn every bridge even before he made his way across. Stung by the terrible knowledge of his impending demise, his journey toward redemption faced a detour of intoxication and self-indulgence. As he now knows, such things are not the stuff of satisfaction, only empty calories and heartache. Ironic, then, that a man who plays such a premium on personal wealth could only feel full upon losing everything. A stark, lonely truth, but an eternal one. Upon such truths are built second chances here in the Twilight Zone. Ten Days, starring Ned Bellamy with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Mark Valente. Heard in the cast were Linda Reiter, David Darlow, Ernest Perry Jr., Roger Mueller, Tony Makis, Saskia Bellori, Joby Cerny, Elizabeth Lido, Martin A. Strope, C.J. Amari, Molly Glynn, and David Pasquese. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced by Carl Amari and directed by Joe B. Cerny for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design, custom Foley effects, recording, and editing are produced in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by sound designers Craig Lee and Todd Beyer. Music for the Twilight Zone is provided by CBS and American Music Incorporated New York. 
To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to download episodes, including six free episodes on our homepage, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking.